So last night we had the fight of Jake Paul versus Mike Perry. The fight was definitely one sided as Mike looked like he had no business being in the ring with Jake. Jake also looked like he was about 40 pounds bigger than Mike and you could definitely tell the size difference was massive. In the fight Jake would pretty much dominate the whole entire fight where he ended up knocking down Mike Perry three times throughout the fight. After the third one in the sixth round Mike was stumbling as he got back up so the ref decided that it was time to stop the fight which was the right decision. I think everyone pretty much saw this coming and if you didn't then I don't know what you were thinking. Mike Perry was doing his normal thing in there blocking punches with his faces but he learned that you really can't do that in boxing. And I could say that Jake looked a lot better because I believe he did. But the competition is definitely not getting better and I think he needs to step it up soon. We all know how Jake is supposed to have this fight with Mike Tyson next. And obviously that fight is definitely one that probably shouldn't be sanctioned at all. Mike Tyson just had a health scare and he's 58 years old. Yes, it is Mike Tyson, but I mean, I don't think anyone that's 58 should be in the ring. And obviously, I think that that fight is just kind of a huge money grab, so yeah. But after the fight, Jake also called out UFC champion Alex Pereira to a boxing match. Recently, Pereira stated that he wants to have a boxing match. And Jake Ball took the opportunity to call him out, and they already FaceTimed like 10 seconds after the fight ended. Pereira posted on Instagram today as well, so I definitely think that he's interested in that fight. But I think there's just no way that that fight will ever happen, unless Dan away really does pull some strings and lets Pereira go. And Pereira is pretty much the face of the UFC right now with him having so many fans on his side so I don't know if Dana White will ever risk that. But enough of talking who he could fight next. Let's talk about Jake Paul and what we can take from the fight he just had with Mike Perry. On Jake's offensive side I think he looked a lot better using his jab way more. Jake was using more of like a power jab on Mike Perry and it was literally stopping him in his tracks every time he kept coming forward. And another thing I noticed about Jake was his combinations getting a lot better. Jake was going upstairs then down to the body and just doing way more than he usually does in his normal fights. Jake used to kind of just throw haymakers and see if they landed and that was really his game plan. But now it seems like he has more of an arsenal and skill set to use against his opponents. And I liked how Jake was hitting and moving away and not just standing there in the pocket. But the problem with that is, now that Jake's fighting at 200 pounds, it seemed to gas him out a little bit. After like the second round when he was kind of putting it on Perry, he was really tired it seemed like. It seemed like he took like a round or two off and got that second win back to where he eventually stopped Mike Perry. And another thing I really didn't like I saw in Jake Paul, and I think it's a continuing factor, is his defense. Mike was throwing wide hooks and they were clipping Jake every now and then. We've all seen how Jake struggles with people who throw combinations. Just like he did in the Tommy Fury fight as well as the one with Nate Diaz. If you throw combinations at Jake, he doesn't know what to do and that was a thing that lost him that fight against Tommy Fury. But Mike Perry was just throwing singular shots and they were hitting Jake. So I definitely think he needs to tighten up his defense and tighten it up good because if he's going to try and become the cruiserweight champion, that's not going to slide. The main problem with Jake is that I just think he needs to fight these real boxers. Fighting in these gimmicky fights is never going to get him to where he wants to be if that's really what he wants to do. Yes, Jake is definitely getting better and better as time goes on, but he's fighting against these guys that aren't even testing him. He hasn't faced any adversity in the past like 3 to 4 fights. In that Mike Perry fight, I don't think he felt threatened at all throughout the fight. Like I said before, Mike clipped him with a few shots, but I don't think it was anything that really did any damage to him. Jake keeps claiming he wants to be the Cruiserweight Champion, but I can't see that right now if he keeps doing what he's doing. With a fight with Mike Tyson scheduled next, it's not going to get any better. I liked when Jake went on that thing where he was kind of just fighting those lower class boxers. Yes, they weren't good competition, but at least he was going down the path a normal boxer would. But then he decided to stray away from that and go for that Mike Tyson fight, and now this fight with Mike Perry. So yeah, I'm guessing Jake Paul is going to have that fight with Mike Tyson next, and then after that, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't see him fighting KSI, as those two never seem to just come together and make that fight happen. So I think we can kind of just take that out of the way, because it's never going to happen. And I think that they were trying to set up a fight with Jake and Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., but after that performance with him, I don't think that's going to happen. Chavez looks bad and it was against Uriah Hall, an MMA fighter, which it was only his second boxing fight. And Chavez was a former WBC middleweight title holder, so yeah, it was definitely a mismatch and he didn't look good in the fight at all. So yeah, I don't know what's going to be after that Mike Tyson car because I don't think he's going to fight Poetan and I don't think he's going to fight KSI. What I would like to see is maybe a rematch with Tommy Fury as I think Jake could definitely maybe beat Tommy Fury. Jake is improving and Tommy is basically doing the opposite as he does nothing outside of the ring nowadays. But yeah, we went over a lot of things in this video in a short amount of time. There was some good takeaways from the fight and some bad ones. 
But in all, we need to see Jake fight some boxers before we can really put a legitimate stamp on him. Let me know what you guys thought of the fight. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe as always. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.